Okay, so our first speaker is Thierry Pobo, a research director in the CNRS. He works on automatic language processing and digital humanities. So Thierry, please go ahead and share your screen. So I hope you can see my screen. Uh, maybe not the cool. Yes, we can, but we can see the whole window. So yes, if you share, yeah, perfect. Okay, so I will speak about uh, generating poetry and around a small project called Upoko, which refer directly to uh, what we call in French Louvoir, Louvoir de Poésie Combinatoire, and I will explain what it is a bit later on. And it's a joint project with different people from uh, my lab uh, working in Paris. So first thing we can ask is, why do we want to produce poems with computers? And uh, In fact, if you look online, if you, if you have a look online, we we'll see that it's very popular activity. There are lots of systems available. It's uh, there are also it's not just a hobby because lots of people are publishing in the best conference. So in my domain, uh, computational linguistics, it's at ACL. So you could see very frequently publication on this topic, and even on Chinese or French there are systems that exist. So why is it so? Because First, it's a way to explore the most recent NLP techniques, but it's also a fun activity and it's non-commercial, whereas most of NLP is now driven by uh, commercial products and commercial activity. And it's also a way to explore machine creativity. To what extent can we say a machine is creative? So what's at stake? It's uh, generating text with constraints, of course. So it's the main thing is maybe ensure proper rhythm and structure of the poem. We need to generate from right to left, so to control what is at the end of the of each verse. And what people generally want to do is to integrate topical constraints so that it is uh, the poem has some coherence. So there are lots of open questions. If we just go from a research point of view, is how to evaluate? Has this any literary interest? So that's uh, probably of interest for people working in literature. And has this uh, any other kind of impact. And I will, try, I will try to answer this question a bit later on. So I will present briefly what we have done uh, around this small project called Upoko. So it refers directly to Keno. So I will not read all you have on the right of the screen, but it's, uh, it's, it's this book that you can see where you have different verse and you can compose different poems by choosing the different verse uh, in the poem. So you can, using this kind of uh, this book, you can produce several billions of poems. So the idea was to, so there are lots of people who took the project from Keno and put it online, but in fact, it is uh, still under copyright. So it's normally not uh, possible to do it or not uh, allowed to do it. So we thought about using some uh, a corpus of French poetry that is free available and to do a bit the same. So we, it was a way to revisit uh, Kuno's idea, and it implied collecting corpus, analyzing the structure of the, of the different verse, and imagining ways for the user to interact with the system. So Kuno, from the beginning, said it, it was not uh, very interesting to have something that produced automatic poems, but he wants to be able to play with the system. So that's also what we, what we wanted to do. So rhyme analysis is something quite simple. So we had two steps. It's not so simple, in fact, but we have some steps for phonetization. So to transform the text, what we have as text, into a, a sequence of sounds. And then we have some specific rules because you may know or you may not know, but French is uh, has very specific rules, like in, uh, I think, any uh, literary traditions about what could be a, a good poem. So this is done using a commercial software called eSpeak. And then we had lots of different rules that have been implemented. The fact that you have uh, different sounds that rhyme in French, like O and O are two different sounds in French, but in fact, you can put it in the end of the verse. But at the, on the other hand, you have things that A that can be written A or A, e, a and E after it, it, that do not rhyme. So it's not obvious because from the phonetic transcription, it would be the same. So you have these two steps that are necessary. And it's also a way to put, uh, explicitly the versification rules in French, which are not so obvious. You have different uh, structure of poems that you can generate. 
And this is what we can produce with the system. So you can see that it is, it looks perfectly okay. If you don't speak French, it looks completely fine. If you speak French, you will see that when you read the text, there are some bits and pieces that looks a bit, uh, a bit strange, a bit odd. Because of course, since we generate uh, verse by verse, the coherence of all the verses is not always uh, completely okay. So what we are doing now is to add uh, non-generative uh, non techniques to the system so that we can produce some new kinds of poems. And uh, for example, we have a better integration. We are looking for better integration of topical constraints so that we better control the coherence of the text. And we can also produce from uh, one or two initial uh, verses so that we can produce, or we hope that at some point we can produce a poem in the style of different author. It can be Baudelaire, or it can be uh, Queneau, or whatever. So the interest and the impact, the impact of this, so there are direct outputs that you can see online. So there is, uh, what we have produced is a, a publicly available database of more than 5,000 French nets. And that, will, that has been produced through a collaboration with the BNF, with the French National Library. And so they gave us lots of texts, lots of, lots of uh, books about poetry, and we extracted from these books the sonnets that they didn't have directly. So it was a good exchange and a good collaboration with the BNF. So they gave us data, and we are able to extract some data and give them back a corpus that is uh, available for other researchers. There is maybe the most important thing, an interactive website that you can uh, use and explore and also a didactic short movie. But that was not all. So we also work with, the, with a group of artists called the Atelier Rafa Roussel. So in fact, it's two, two artists. And they have produced one you can see on the right of the screen. So the poetry box. So it's really a box, a kind of uh, a tool, something that you can carry and you can show in different uh, locations, in museums or in libraries. And it's also a fun object so that you can produce poetry by just uh, turning the wheel on the side of the object. So it's, it's fun. It's a way to have interaction with people and to have uh, children, for example, interact and uh, look at the system. We add different things on the internet, on, the, on uh, Twitter. So the infinite poem is not running anymore, but we have the Twitter Upoko bots that produce uh, four verse every six hours. And we had different projects like Book on Demand and the digital in ink printer that was a project from the Atelier Rafa Roussel. So we had different tools that, so that it's not just a website, but we can really show this kind of, uh, of project in museums or library or different uh, locations. It's also interesting for educational purposes. So we made different demonstrations like in Fête de la Science, so it's a festival of science in Paris. And we also went to primary and secondary schools. And the finding that, uh, so those people were sometimes afraid that uh, this looks like poetry could be anything. But in fact, people understand very well that these are not real poems. They are interested uh, in going further. So when, especially when you're online, if you put the, your mouse on a specific, specific verse, you can see where the verse comes from. So it's a way to also explore sometimes you have a verse that is quite original, a bit strange. So people want to see where it comes from. And it's a way to explore the corpus of French poetry. Uh, it's also a way for, especially when we go to school, a way to explore the notions that are a bit abstract. And professors often say it's difficult to, to teach what is text coherence. Uh, through this experiment, you can see that some poems have problems. So they are not completely coherent. They are bits and pieces that look strange. So it's a good way for to uh, to make children see and uh, check this, uh, these problems. And it's also a way to explain explicitly versification rules. So, so what people say, so different teachers say, it was a very effective way to introduce poetry to pupils. So sometimes they are a bit bored and that was a way to, to show that it's not only something old, but it's, uh, it's also fun. And it's a way to introduce to the old world of poetry. And lastly, it's a way to explore computational creativity. So there are big questions that uh, people ask since the beginning of computer science. So are computers really creative? And if yes, in what way? So, and you have people like uh, Kenneth Goldsmith who wrote about uncreative writing. So the idea is to move beyond the question of new text and manage past appropriate and reconstruct those that are already exist. So 
to take what ex already exists to produce some new poems and some new form of literature and to think about what we produce when we do this, what, uh, what, to what extent can we say that the computer is uh, creative. So the conclusion to just to be short and just give you an overview of what we have done is, so what I try to, to show is that generating poetry is both uh, fun and serious. So it's based, it is based on the most recent NLP techniques and it is really a way to explore very difficult questions like uh, uh, text coherence and so on. And uh, there are still a lot of work to be done to reach human level text because we, if you ask uh, someone to evaluate, it's very easy, generally speaking, to, to see that a text has been produced automatically, at least for poetry, or not automatically. So it is, in a way, a hobby. So it's, people have fun doing this, but not only because, so as we can see, there is a direct interest for educational purposes in particular. And it's a, a way to, to think about the notion of authorship and creativity in uh, computer science. So this was very brief, but you can see a lot of things online and uh, the best message maybe I can give you for, to conclude this talk is go online, try, the, try the, the system and you see if you have fun or if you see something interesting in all this. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. I think we have a couple of minutes for questions if anyone would like to unmute and ask now. Hi, Terry. Thank you. This is Tom Kramer from Stanford. Um, I, I loved your label that it is both fun and serious. Um, wanna, have you shared the poems or can you talk about what sort of reactions the poems have received from people who've read them, either serious people or fun people? Um, we don't. One reaction we had so far was that there was only mail in the database because it's a fact that uh, it's easy to find uh, male poems but not women. So now we have a website for women's poems, and then uh, the reaction is more about uh, to what way it is coherent or not coherent, or to what should we do to improve coherence of the text. And uh, that was the main question because people see when you read the text, you can see that there is something that is not okay. So the big question is generally about how can we improve this and have something that really looks more than human poetry. And I think the answer is, there is no easy answer, but one answer is to go to neural generations that should produce something that is more uh, coherent in this way. Any other questions right now? Yeah, quick question. This is Javier de la Rosa from the National Library of Norway. Uh, this is really fascinating. Uh, I used to work on the other side of this, which is basically uh, trying to automatically analyze the metricality and the rhyme of verses. So I was wondering what kind of processes of software did you use to assess that the produced sonnets are actually metrical? Yes, I know there have been lots of work on this. Uh, I know more about the Finnish tradition where people have analyzed lots of verse, but also in French, people have done this. So people who generally do, so in fact, our generation system is more a system to analyze first because we, we need to analyze what have been produced in the 19th century. So we do this and we don't do this completely, but one way is to just have this phonetic transcription and then having rules to analyze the uh, lengths and the rhymes and everything. But you have things that I did not detail like DRS, so if you take the word DRS in French, it can be DA with one syllable or DA with two syllable. And that is just because you know that you have a number of syllables in the, in the verse that you can analyze this. So we don't go as far as this, but uh, yes, you have lots of research that have been done. Like I know someone who has done analysis of all Racine and Corneille in French, and they are able to check the structure and check the, how it is composed. So, you have lots of research that have been done on this and it's quite interesting. Thank you. I hope I have answered the questions. Yeah. 